Deming was a statistician by training. He graduated in mathematics from Wyoming University and Yale and spent his early working life counting the American population for the US Census Bureau. Facing this laborious task, Deming set about applying his statistical methods to speed things up. He believed his procedures saved the Bureau several hundred thousand dollars. When America joined the Second World War, Deming's skills were used to train the managers who had run the production lines for the war effort. Deming's work methods were based on a rigorous application of statistics. Eliminate waste was a key message he created and dramatically reduced the waste by scrapping and reworking of scarce raw materials. Deming's interest in adopting these methods had been influenced by another American statistician. In 1931, Dr. Schuhart wrote a key text which laid down the principles of statistical process control, stating, what could be measured must be measured exactly. Control charts could show what was in statistical control and what was not. The war, conventional and nuclear, destroyed Japanese industry. When the country's young managers approached the task of renewal, they wanted new styles of management. World War II was a triumph for industrial management and the production of the grim evidence that the American superiority in their skills lay all around the Japanese. The Americans sent consultants to advise on better management. Members among them were Homer Sarason from Western Electrics and Dr. Joseph Duran, another management consultant who was steeped in the methods in statistical control. Then in 1950, Dr. Deming arrived to tower over the Japanese, both literally and metaphorically. They were sorely afraid that they had established reputation for a shoddy quality, cheap and worth the price, that they could never undo it. I assured them that it would take only a short while to undo that reputation, develop new reputation. And remember this, when I talked with top management in Japan, I was talking to 80% of the capital. I was back again in six months, back again in another six months, back in 1952, several trips, always teaching the same thing. They listened. I said that in five years, the whole world would know about Japanese quality, that manufacturers the world over would be screaming for protection. They beat it. They did it in four years. Despite the dry statistics, Deming's theories are very sensitive to people. His fishtail diagram illustrates how any system is the sum of its human parts. People in a system must cooperate, the one with the other. The system must have an aim. Everybody must know about it. Know what his job is. Who depends on him? Whom, is he, who, whom does he depend on? Then there's joy and work. Because you feel you belong, you're important, you're really part of the You know, and you've done a good job and have a chance to do it. That's all people ask for. Deming offered 14 key principles to managers for transforming business effectiveness. The points were first presented in his book, Out of Crisis. Although Deming doesn't use the term in his book, it's often credited with launching the total quality management movement. Number one, create consistency of purpose towards improvement of product and service, with the aim to become competitive, to stay in business and to provide jobs. Number two, adopt the new philosophy. We are in a new economic age. Western management must awaken to the challenge, must learn their responsibilities and take on leadership for change. Number three, 
Cease dependence on inspection to achieve quality. Eliminate the need for massive inspection by building quality into the product in the first place. Number four, in the practice of awarding business on the basis of price tag, instead minimize total cost. Move towards a single supplier for any one item on a long-term relationship of loyalty and trust. Number five, improve constantly and forever the system of production and service to improve the quality and the productivity and thus constantly decrease cost. Sixth, institute training on the job. Number seven, institute leadership. The aim of supervision should be to help people and machines and gadgets to do better. Supervision of management is in need of an overhaul as well as supervision of production workers. Number eight, drive out fear so that everybody may work effectively for the company. Number nine, break down barriers between departments. People in research, design, sales and production must work together as a team in order to foresee problems for production and usage that may be encountered with a product or service. Number 10, eliminate slogans and exhortations and targets for the workforce asking for zero defects and new levels of productivity. Such exhortations only create adversarial relationships as the bulk of the causes of low productivity and low quality belong to the system and thus lie beyond the power of the workforce. A. Eliminate work standards, quotas on the factory floor, substitute with leadership. B. Eliminate management by objective. Eliminate management by numbers and numerical goals. Instead, substitute with leadership. Number 11. Remove barriers that rob the hourly worker of his pride of workmanship. The responsibility of supervisors must be changed from sheer numbers to quality. 12. Remove barriers that rob people in management and in engineering of their right to pride of workmanship. This means abolishment of the annual or merit rating and the management by objectives. 13. Institute a vigorous program of education and self-improvement. Number 14. Put everybody in the company to work to accomplish a transformation. The transformation is everybody's job.